So today I'm taking a look at a Linux distribution that has been very popular here in recent weeks as far as it's seen a lot of news coverage. This is Omarchy or Omarchi. I'm not exactly sure how they expect us to pronounce this word. I'm going to call it Omarchy. This is beautiful, modern, and opinionated Linux by DHH. Now DHH, I guess it's this guy. I don't know who this person is if I click on him. Uh, let's see. Uh, we get a little... Uh, background story. It looks like he is the creator of Ruby on Rails. So very cool. And he has created an Arch-based distribution that is basically his custom like Hyperland configuration and his suite of applications that he uses. Basically, it's his distribution, right? So very cool. I'm going to check it out because I do like Arch. I do like tiling window managers and Hyperland is a fine window manager. He mentions it's very opinionated, so it's going to have some AI stuff. You can see it's got Grok, for example, as a web app. I think it's going to have ChatGPT and Copilot and a lot of AI stuff. This person obviously is a developer, so it makes sense why he might have things like ChatGPT or Copilot on the ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the ISO and I'm going to run through an installation and first look inside a virtual machine. All right, so I created a VM and I really like the boot screen, I guess, with Omarky here. We get a little splash screen. And we launch straight into an installer. So it looks like a standard, you know, like command line installation, although it does have a, a terminal user interface to it. And this looks very straightforward. So keyboard, I need English US and then create my username DT, create a strong and complicated password for the DT user, confirm the strong and complicated password, full name for Git authentication. Uh, I'm not gonna be using Git authentication, so I'll skip that email address. Again, for Git authentication, I'll skip that. Host name, Omarky is the default, I'll go with that. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me, so. That's awesome. So using some geolocation there. Does this look right? And we get a little summary. Looks good. I'll hit yes. Install to what drive? I've got a virtual hard drive here, 20 gigs. I'll say yes. Format disk, yes. And away it goes. Very easy installation program, right? I love easy installs. Uh, it's very opinionated because it didn't ask me much, right? It didn't ask me about swaps, it didn't ask me about file systems, it didn't ask me about encryption, it didn't ask me any of that. It's going to make some choices for me, which is fine, you know, because if I really cared, I wouldn't have installed this anyway. I'd go install baseline Arch and make my own decisions, but it looks like, well, I can already tell, it's setting up Lux, so it is going to do some encryption. I'm gonna step away and grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once the installation has completed. The installation completed. It took a good 10 minutes, maybe a little longer for the installer to complete. So it, it did a lot of stuff. Um, so it's, it's not a terribly long installation, but it, it will take a few minutes. And now when I reboot, it goes straight to the login manager. I'm assuming it just needs my user password. And we boot into our Hyperland desktop. Now, full disclosure, this is the second time I rebooted because the first time I rebooted and got into the Hyperland desktop, uh, the screen resolution was not 1920 by 1080. And I fixed that and then rebooted it again. And to fix this, all you need to do, uh, if you have this problem inside a physical machine or a virtual machine, click on the little button here and you get a menu, kind of like a, a start menu. And you have setup. And again, first time using this, this was very easy to find. I found monitors here and I clicked on it. And then it launches NeoVim or Vim. I'm not sure exactly which one this is. Now the screen resolution here is very small. Can I zoom in here? What is the key binding? Okay, it's just zoom uh, equal sign, so zoom in here. And what I did is I had a line here that was monitor equals preferred comma auto comma auto. I changed that to monitor equals, in my case, virtual dash one comma 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz and then comma auto comma one. And how did I get this information? Well, in Hyperland, usually you have a, uh, a program called Hyper CTL, Hyper Control. I know you can't read this. The uh, font is very small, the default font in this distro. Again, probably because I bet the developer is using this primarily on a laptop so he has a smaller screen resolution but anyway hyper ctl and i believe it's monitors 
Yes, it is. So Hyper CTL Space Monitors, and it'll tell you all the monitors that you have plugged in, right? In my case, it's a virtual machine, and the monitor is Virtual-1. That's the ID. And then I'm setting that to 1920 by 1080. So add that to your HyperLANMonitors.conf file, and then from there, you're good to go. Uh, the key binding to close a window is Super W. That's the default binding here. And if you have trouble finding the default bindings, again, go into the menu system and then learn key bindings. And you get a nice printout here of the default bindings. And I don't know too many of the bindings. I've only used this for about two minutes now, right? So, and I had to look up how to close the window. It was super W. Uh, let's see, what is open a terminal? Super return is open a terminal. That makes sense. What is, is there a run launcher? Uh, launcher, uh, not exactly sure. App. Maybe apps, launch apps, super space. Let's try that. So super space works okay. And you can see we have Alacrity as a terminal. I could launch that and let's zoom way in. Let's get some system information here. Is something like FastFetch installed? It is. Oh, awesome. I wasn't expecting it to be installed, but it is here. And you can see right now, the OS is Omarky version 3.0.2. It's using Linux 6.16.8 as the kernel. Uh, we're obviously using Hyperland 0.51.1 Wayland, of course. And then Alacrity, the terminal, is 0.15.1. It has 868 packages installed via Pac-Man. Now that is pretty light, right? It's pretty lightweight distribution, even though it's got some stuff installed. And then Super W would close the window with focus. If I get back into the menu system, now normally I wouldn't want to go and click on the menu with a mouse. I would prefer just to do this with the keyboard. And you can see Super Alt plus space. So let's see, Super Alt space. Okay, that works. I'll try to remember that the rest of the video. That way I don't have to use my mouse to get into my run launcher. And then apps, yeah, let's launch the apps. And then let me just, I'm gonna scroll down if I can. Do I have to use, no, I can use the mouse. All right, so let's start at the top. So one password, I don't know what that program is. I'm sure it's a password manager. I've just never used it. We have chat GPT, of course. I believe that'll just be a web app. Basically, it launches a browser in, you know, chat GPT in a browser, right? And from here, you could log in. If you've got a chat GPT account, I do. I'm not gonna log in, obviously, on this video. I wonder if there's a hotkey to just get to the apps portion of this menu. Let's go to learn. Let's go to key bindings. Um, apps. What was it? Super space. Okay. Yeah. So super space. If I just want to go directly to the apps, makes sense. Okay. Uh, we have Chromium as a browser. Uh, Discord is here. Docker is here. Electron is here, of course, for things like uh, Discord, so an Electron app. We have GitHub, uh, some Google stuff. Hey, I don't know what Hey is. Caden Live, which is interesting, but I guess he might have to edit videos on occasion. I don't know. Maybe he has a YouTube channel. Probably does. Uh, LibreOffice. We have the full LibreOffice suite. Makes sense. Uh, let's see. We have MPV and NeoVim, OBS, Obsidian, uh, Spotify is here. WhatsApp is here. X is here. So, you know, you got some proprietary things. Zoom. Uh, Zoom also is an Electron app. So, you know, you got some Electron stuff here. Spotify is also, I believe, an Electron app. And then you've got uh, X. Let's see. Is this just Twitter as a web app? Yeah, I guess it is. Or maybe it's uh, specifically for Grok. Maybe the, the AI part of Twitter. I don't have a Twitter account. I got rid of Twitter like eight, nine years ago because, you know, Twitter is a cesspool, right? social media in general. Got rid of Twitter and Facebook and all that, but I, I'm sure he's using that for some of the AI stuff. But I don't have accounts for Twitter or Grok. I don't have an account for like GitHub Copilot because I left GitHub on my GitLab. I do have a chat GPT account. You know, I do use things like Gemini, Llama, Claude. I have an account. You know, I really like Claude for coding especially. And I know some people or not going to like having some AI stuff, you know, in here, right? But, uh, for, you know, you got to understand a lot of people depend on this stuff now, and it's only going to get more and more ingrained in society and pretty much everybody's way of life and everybody's workflow. 
uh, it's starting to become something I use on a daily basis as far as, you know, I use AI for certain things. So you know, I'm not one of these people that I'm going to just lose my mind because, oh, AI is in a distro, but I've already seen some things on the internet as far as uh, when I was thinking about making this video, that is like the big complaint, right? Oh, it's got AI. It must be evil, a terrible burn it with fire, right? <laughs> for me, I actually think this is not necessarily a negative. Let's check out some of the default applications. We've got files. I'm assuming that's Nautilus. Looked like he was installing a lot of like standard, like the GNOME suite of application. Yeah, that's definitely Nautilus. We also had like GNOME contacts and GNOME pictures and things like that as far as uh, applications. Let's get back into the apps. Anything else interesting here? Uh, again, pretty light as far as the suite of applications installed. Again, only 868 things were installed. So uh, not much to see there. I think uh, the more interesting thing would be to get back into the main menu and other than apps, learn. We had the key bindings. We also have Omarkey. I'm assuming this would just take us to the website for documentation. Uh, it looks like, yeah, we have a little manual here. Very cool. Very cool. I like what they've done here. This is sharp. Yeah, I'm, I'm really quite impressed with this. It's hard to impress me with Linux distributions these days because I've literally taken a look at hundreds, hundreds of distributions. Uh, let's learn more about Hyperland. I'm assuming this would just take us to the Hyperland uh, wiki. Yeah, uh, it's a web app, right? It's just the Hyperland wiki on the Internet. But it makes sense. You know, it's, I like that it's all kind of conveniently organized arch of course would probably be the arch wiki neovim be the neovim documentation and you even have some bash stuff would this be the bash man page no it's the bash scripting cheat sheet yeah very cool a nice well organized cheat sheet kind of simplifying how bash scripting works wow you know what i should steal this script right or the the cheat sheet i should steal that right because that would be very very handy and then in the main menu, you have trigger. I don't know what that is. Uh, screen capture, I guess. Share, toggle. What's toggle? Toggle, screensaver, nightlight. Okay, yeah, I get it. Let's get back into the uh, main menu here. Oh, there we go. Style, I'm assuming would just be theming. Let's check this out. So the default theme, I guess, is cat poochin, I'm guessing. No, no, we switched to cat poochin, whatever that is <laughs> not a theme i'm that familiar with it looks good though yeah i don't mind it and then theme uh cat poochin latte ooh ooh a little bit too white for me right so uh can't do that that'd be tough on the eyes and other things we've got everforest grub box Hanagawa, I don't know that one, Matte Black, Nord, Osaka Jade, Rostretto, Rose Pine, and Tokyo Night. Tokyo Night's a pretty neat theme. I guess that's the default, because there we go. But let's pick one that wasn't the default, though, just to be different for a little bit. Let's check out Osaka Jade. Oh, I, I like the wallpaper. I don't know how I like the theme, but I definitely like the wallpaper. Yeah, I like the... The terminal, a little bit of transparency to let you know some green come through. You got a green border. Not bad. Not bad at all. I think I'll rock with that for now. Back into the main menu with super alt space. You got to remember that. Also under style, we had font. So you can change the font if you want. For me, I'm fine with the default font here. So I'm not going to change that. So I'll hit escape. We can change the background. Oh, and I guess it just picks a random background. It's interesting. I thought maybe it would open like a uh, image editor or a image viewer, maybe where I could actually see the images and pick myself. But I guess, I guess it randomly picks some things. But I mean, I like this, uh, the ones it's picking style background. But I would want to cycle through these fast, and this is kind of clunky because you got to go through about three or four steps every time you want to change the wallpaper. But I guess there was only three wallpapers uh, for this theme. So super alt space again and style one last thing uh change hyperland assuming the uh, panel theme the bar is probably what that is i actually like uh what's going on here actually this just opens it looks like it's just going to open up them where i could edit the uh 
the configs for Hyperland if I wanted. I'm not going to do that. I also noted this this is not standard film. Um, what is going on here? So Vim, so it's not Vim, it's NeoVim, and it's not NeoVim just out of the box. It's been configured. It's shipping a distribution of NeoVim called LazyVim. You can see you got your little dashboard. So that's pretty opinionated too because you're going to have a lot of people that, especially if this is for developers that are going to be using their own custom Vim or NeoVim configs, and they they may not want <laughs> uh, lazy Vim, so uh, I'm fine with it myself. I, I really don't configure Vim or NeoVim in any real way when I use them. Super Alt Space to get back into the menu, and let's see, setup, we've well, already been in here to correct our monitor resolution, but you've got some other stuff you need to change. Key bindings, that's just going to open up probably a configuration file that has all your key bindings, so you can make some changes. I'm not going to do any of that um, config. I'm assuming that would just be your standard Hyperland config. Actually, it's got a subgroup, so config, so Hyperland, Hyperidle, Hyperlock, which is your screen lock, um, yeah, your Waybar, like you can edit all of that very cool and then you have some software stuff install remove update makes sense and then about information would be just opening a terminal with the uh, fast fetch okay well <laughs> and then the last thing was the system i'm assuming that your uh, log out reboot all of that yeah lock screensaver suspend relaunch restart shut down I'm not going to do any of that. Let me hit escape. Let me hit escape twice to get out of the menu. On the uh, default panel here at the top, you've got workspaces, right? You got workspace one, two through five, right? So you can switch workspaces. You have your clock in the center. If I click on the clock, uh, what do we get? Date. So it's uh, day of the week and time. If I click on it, I get the month and date and then the week and the year as well. And then over here, is our sys tray and then we've got some applications uh, sitting in the tray here for bluetooth and volume uh, what is this last one here ah, it opens our system monitor so uh, what is this is this one of the uh, like b top uh, programs uh, let me quit out of that let me super space to enter a terminal i believe it's b top yeah that's b top i actually did a video about b top not too long ago so there you have it a very quick and cursory look at omarky i think i think i like it right i, I think it's a well done project uh I, I wouldn't necessarily make some of the choices they made because i have my own configs and my own way of doing things but i i think it's polished i think it's well put together thumbs up job well done now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt Steve, 40 Millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darloff Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark Methos, Erion Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Omarky would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about fantastic free and open source software like Omarky, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.